So uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining Sacred Segments. Uh, as you may know, this is a group for having the focus on healing and manifestation. And uh, tonight, Michael Keegan will uh, be introducing his segment on um, working with nature, which I'm very excited about. Thank you for being here, Michael. Um, and also, Later on, uh, Florentine will be joining us for another segment on remote viewing. So I'm very excited. It's a, a kind of like a double feature this evening. Um, as usual, I'm going to start with a question to the group. Um, but before I do that, uh, perhaps you'd just like to introduce yourselves. I'll, I'll go first, obviously. My name is Alexis. I have a background in healing and um, working with the voice. Uh, which kind of led me to the whole healing thing. Um, so, uh, Anne, would you like to say hello? Everybody? Yes, hello. Um, I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, and Greta is my coach. Great, great to have you with us. Um, I'm excited also to introduce Greta, who's going to be doing a closing he healing se segment at the end of this session. Greta and I have worked together a lot in the past and it's been really exciting meeting and working with you. Would you like to say hello, Greta? Absolutely. Hi everyone, I'm Greta. I'm a manifestation coach and energy healer and I'm super happy to be here. Wonderful, thank you. Anna, and the depths of your wonderful being. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> uh, my name is Anna and I'm a shamanic healer and uh, working with a method I call, it was given to me that I call integrated soul healing. And uh, I work with clients to help them just transform their lives. And I'm very happy to be here. I'm in Valencia, Spain where we have not had the sun that we should be having in the spring in Spain. I'm very unhappy. <laughs> well, I'm loving that glow behind you. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, I decided to light a candle and uh, yeah, I decided to not do a, a funny background this time. Love Just it. Just have like my, my real life behind me. <laughs> Good to have you with us. Thank you, Anna. Good to be here. And Andrew, good to, good to have you as well. Yeah, Andrew yeah. and I have worked together in the past as well, and he's a, an amazing guy. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks. I'm Andrew. Um, I'm an energy healer and spiritual coach that uses the emotion code, body code, and easy entity release, which includes removing black magic curses and all kinds of weird stuff from past lives and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I just want every you know I want my clients to reach their potential in life and um, yeah, just enjoy this uh, experience. So, thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Andrew. Carisha, always love having you on this group. Hi. Please introduce yourself. Um, hi, my name is Carisha. Um, I don't really know what to say. I'm recently a yoga instructor, so that's awesome to get to say that out loud. That's really cool. Um, and otherwise I just spread lots and lots of love and do lots of different projects to help people that are struggling um, around. Beautiful soul, lovely to have you with us. Okay. And yes, you do spread lots of love. And also Maria, I see you've joined us. Good to see you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, luckily, I just remembered that we had this, so I managed to join in. Um, I can't remember what we were supposed to say. Don't worry, just I'm asking you to just introduce yourself if you'd like. Oh, right. uh, yeah, okay. Um, I'm Maria. Um, I am um, an avid... Um, sorry, I'm, I'm very... I like, I like to promote meditation. Um, I work with students um, in a pastoral sense of... of of way, um, so supporting them with any issues that they have, um, and they've um, they've blossomed and they've gotten a lot better with meditation and yoga and and mindfulness and things like that. So um, yeah, that's that's what I do, and I'm I'm studying clinical psychology as well, okay. just trying to understand things a little bit better. Yeah, 
Amazing. Good to have you with us, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Luke, good evening. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. My name's Luke. Um, my last name is Bruffy. And I live in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, it's uh, a beautiful day here, even though it's raining. And um, I do a variety of things. Mostly I'm just uh, an illusionist in this thing we call reality. So there you love go. That. I love the artwork behind you. It's fascinating. That is the artwork of a friend of mine from her show in New York. Not in my house, but... <laughs> cool. cool. It works well as a background, so... Love it. Michael, would you like to introduce yourself? Yep, my name is Michael. Um, I live in Ireland um, on the East Coast in the county of Wicklow. And I'm in my garden outside at the moment. I'm here with Ben, my Springer Spaniel. Okay. I'm retired. Um, I was a management consultant and organizational psychologist for many years and a coach. Um, I'm now a fully qualified um, forest therapy guide as of yesterday yay oh congratulations that's amazing i'm really looking forward to your talk after i ask uh, ask this first question really excited to have you with us tonight thank you himanshi would you like to say hello good to see you hello everyone yeah it's good to be back i mean i was quite not busy but a little tired with everything so i wanted to take a break and today i feel fresh again to start again I hope everybody's doing fine. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're all here. We're all present and correct. So that's everybody. Um, and I'm sure there will be some other people that are joining us as time as time uh, passes. Um, so I'd just like to remind you to please keep your um, answers brief and succinct to about two minutes, just so that we have enough time to cover everything. I'm going to put a question to the group, which is what question could you be asked that would motivate an action for you to move towards your dreams? And I'm gonna start that with Andrew. Sorry, can you repeat that? Sorry. What question could you be asked that would motivate an action for you to move towards your dreams? Um, yeah. Um, right. Um, it's a bit of a weird question, I realize that. Yeah. Um, okay, um, okay, here's one for you. Yeah. Do you have any regret? Will you have any regrets when you die? Mm. And, and what would the answer be to that? Um, absolutely not, because, like, yeah, I take every opportunity in life that the universe throws at me, and whether it's bad or good. Um, yeah, I don't have any regrets, and yeah, it's just, uh, it's all a great roller coaster. So, yeah, I keep on thinking about this every day. Um, you really need to take every opportunity um, because it happens for a reason, doesn't it? You know, like the universe gives you different pathways and, you know, you just follow it and eventually it might bring you to where you need to be. So That's a beautiful way to live. Thanks, Andrew, for bringing that up. Yeah, thank you. Maria, would you like me to answer the question again? Uh, to, yes, ask, to ask it. So what question um, could you be asked that would motivate you to take an action towards your to, towards a goal in your life. Okay. Um, what would your children be most proud of? Wow, that's beautiful. Be what a beautiful thought. And and what would the answer be? Do you know? Hello. Um, Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Good, good. Lovely to see you. I'm pretty sure the answer would be everything because um, I aspire just to be someone that they look for, like a role model to them and teaching them everything that they need in this life. So I have no worries about that, actually. So I'm quite proud of that. What a beautiful question. I love that. It's, it's very- We got some crabs and then they died. Sorry. <laughs> I love the crown that you're wearing. It's beautiful. Thank you. 
Thank you, Maria. Luke, what question would you ask yourself that you would find motivational? Well, a question that I asked myself, when the first one that came into my mind when you asked that, because there's lots of questions I ask myself, yeah. um, you know, is what is it that I give up to be the person that I am? Wow. Um, and that's one that's, uh, I've just, you know, keeps me thinking and motivated to do better. And, and what would it be? What would the answer be? Or are you still figuring it out? Well, what is it that I give up? I, I give up the kingdom of heaven to be trapped in the illusion. And I think that's the short answer. You know, I give up you know, everything that I trap myself with my ego, my, you know, is the, I'm giving up bliss i'm giving up the other side i'm giving up the connection to spirit to be to be human involved, to right. be human and to be involved in the illusion sometimes and all that frustration and anger and all that stuff that comes up as we uh, do, do, as it does with humans wow profound thank you luke himanshi um what would your question be to yourself if you were to ask one that would mo be yeah. motivational. Uh, this is something which I have been doing since a very long time. And so the question is, when I die, will I be able to see the true source or the higher self or the God eye to eye? So if I'm doing anything, I want to be 100% honest, pure from heart. And it's like, Tomorrow when I have to face them, I could just see them in the eyes and I can just tell them that I did what was correct during that time. I did and everything with the true intention. So this is something really inspires me and motivates me to be a good person every day. That's incredible. It really does um, bring to mind the idea of quantum selves, how we, we have like many parts of ourselves. And, you know, if we're fractured through some kind of trauma or, you know, some experience that, that we need to integrate all of our separate selves, we can, we can literally ask our higher selves to, to guide us and to speak to us. That's what, um, that's what your response made me think of. Thank you, Manchi. Greta, would you like to answer this question? Yes. I have, um, I have kind of a short and small one. So my question would be, what is one small thing you can do today to bring yourself closer to your dreams and your goals? Wow. Bite size. Bite size, yeah, because I find that sometimes we just want to do such big things and it, it just becomes so much and insurmountable. But if oh, you make wow. it one small thing and you do one small thing every day and you get the compound effect and suddenly you're there. And what, what would be your thing? My thing, I feel like every day I'm, I'm doing a bunch of things that take me there. I'm a big fan of to-do lists. <laughs> um, and I guess the main thing is to make sure that I do the most important things. So maybe my thing is prioritize, you know. That make makes sure sense. I have my, my goal, my North Star, and then I go there. Do the thing that's most important to you first, right? My nephew um, and I went for a walk earlier park and um, he said something that was quite profound to me about writing writing things down and how it it actualizes them you know like in a to-do list it's a very powerful thing to do just write something down mm. it bring, brings it into the physical world thank you Greta were you going to say something else yeah I just wanted to share a little one more thing because the to-do list can sometimes become very long so a great thing to do is to start your day dividing a, a piece of paper in two, decide what you actually think you can and want to do today. And then on the other side, you write, this is what I want the universe to take care of. And that's everything else. Mm, surrender. It's a very yeah. powerful thing. Love yeah. that. Thank you, Greta. 
Uh, and what is a question that you would uh, ask yourself if you, if you could, if there was anything? So sorry. <laughs> um, all of these questions have, I think, have been great, but I, I cannot come up with my own. I'm sorry. I think no. my problem is my dream. What is my dream? That's so, a good question. Yeah, well, yeah, there you go. What is my dream? <laughs> It's, it's also okay not to know, you know. Um, Deepak Chopra talk, talks in, about in the Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, he talks about, um, you know, the field of pure possibilities. And a really, really good place to be is to not know what the future holds and to sort of have a trust in that unknown, you know. So it's a, it's a very powerful place to be because you're on the edge of all possibilities, you know which is quite an exciting place to be, really. Yeah. So don't be sorry. <laughs> Anna, would you, thank you. Thank you, Anne. Anna, would you like to share yeah. thoughts on this? Yeah, it's funny, because when you first asked the question the very first time you said it, I got like all like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I got very flustered by it. And then I kind of realized that Maybe the reason why I get flustered by it, because I tend to ask myself, I put a lot of pressure on myself and I give myself a lot of grief or I have, I've, I've changed this, um, a lot of grief for not fulfilling my purpose and, you know, feeling like I've wasted time. And, and but actually lately I have been totally focused on what my purpose is in this lifetime. But I, in answer to your question about what question I would ask myself or be asked, it would be, I guess, if this were my last incarnation in the human form, what, what do I want to accomplish before I go, before I, you know, change or whatever, you know, like, I mean, what, um, what do I need to do in this lifetime? What did I come here to do? Why and am I would, here? What would the answer be? Um, the work that I'm doing, the spiritual oh, healing great. work. So you're doing it. Yeah. That's yes. wonderful. You and wonderful. Um, it's, but it's like, I finally am like, just really embracing it and not allowing myself to get sidetracked by other things like teaching English and, yeah. you know, excuses and, and living your purpose. You've, you've chosen yeah, and and if I could share this, I, I've also decided to really take care of my physical vehicle mm -hmm. because um, it suffered a lot through all the stress and life stuff. And um, I really, I want to make sure that this physical vehicle can, you know, continue to serve me to, to hold this energy so that I can actually do these things and be of service. Yeah, that makes so, sense. So, and I'm also giving myself time to sometimes not do and just be and give myself that space. Like, so balance. Yeah, it's really important to have self care and self love practice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for sharing mm -hmm. that. It's beautiful. Yeah. Karisha. Hi. Um, funnily enough, like when you first said the question, I was like, oh, that's tricky but my mum asked me a question today and it really made me think and I was like oh that's that's good um so it links up so she asked me if I'm using all of my connections because we was doing a we was on a um, course by um master Sri Akashana and he was doing like a healing um workshop so I was watching it and I was just looking at all the people that were on it like from all over the world and I was like oh this is so beautiful that one being has managed to get like a thousand people in this space that wants to help to teach them how to heal themselves and each other. Um, and then for that moment, I just imagined how it must feel to be able to hold that kind of space um, for others. And I, was, I said to her mum, like, imagine that, like, how beautiful is this? You've got everyone all over the world just in one space. And then she said to me, yeah, but you've you've got people all over the world as well. And I was like, oh yeah. And then she's like, yeah, so there are things that you can do. Then she started naming people that I've like stayed with when I've gone on travels on my own um, in different countries. She was like, 
but surely if you like spoke to them and contacted them and let them know what you were doing they would want to do some of it as well I was like oh yeah I haven't even thought about that um so I guess the question for myself would be like am I using all of my connections not only for myself but for them as well so that we can all work together to just create more love and healing um wow. so I always want to ask myself that question because there's so many people around me even here that do so much incredible work so mm -hmm. like just to be able to connect with people more like this group and yourself Alexis and just everyone and Greta and everybody everybody Maria everyone <laughs> that's beautiful thank that's you my question thank you Mystic M, um, would you like to say hello? <laughs> Can you hear me? Hey, yes. Okay. Good to have you. What was the question? I kind of come. I kind of came on late. What's your what? What would you like to be called? What's your name? Uh, Mystic or Misty, either or. It's oh, fine. beautiful, beautiful. Good to have you with us. So the question is, um, if you were to ask yourself a question that would be motivational and propel you forward into taking an action uh, towards your goal to, or towards a goal, what would the question be? Oh man, I, I would say like, do you know what you want? Get crystal clear on what it is you want. And if there's multiple things that you do want, how can you um, create balance and harmony in your day to day to attain both. So um, I think a lot, I think a lot of it comes to time management and um, yes, um, really putting things down so you can actually see how you're able to manage it. Um, because otherwise, it just gets overwhelming, and you know you're all over the place. What would your answer be if you want to share? Uh, um, yeah, like I started making a list at night of what I know that I can get done the next day. And I have my things daily that are non-negotiables, like going to the gym five days a week, um, you know, meditation. Um, and I, you know, yesterday I, um, you know, looking at times when I would normally do something like go for a walk, which is still important, but if you're trying to build something else, then you need to also utilize your time to invest in that and maybe get some fresh air at another time. So it's just basically, um, I think it all just comes down to time management and planning. I think the night before is super important because if you wake up without a plan, then you're not really you're kind of just, you know, Yes, I, lo I love what you've brought focus onto. Very important, both time management and being crystal clear in your vision of what it is that you would like to manifest. I think it's a really powerful thing to, to do uh, and to have intention and, and, to, and to have clear vision of whatever it is that you would like to manifest in life. Very good point. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and Michael, what what would you say in answer to the question? Do you have, have any thoughts that you'd like to share on that? Well, I first thought it would be similar to Greta's that uh, what are you prepared to do um, this week or today or whenever? But then I thought, right, let's, let's try and turn it around. And my question would be, describe your goal or your dream as a story. Oh, I love that. Wow, that's amazing. That's a very profound thing to think about. It kind of reminds me of um, the idea of cosmic scripting. And uh, right. just kind of writing a story of, of what you want to create kind of thing. I love that. Well, with that, thank you. Have I have I missed anybody out in um, answering that question? Because it's quite easy for me to do that, jumping about the squares. So if I have, then please let me know. And uh, apologies if, if, I, if I've missed anyone. Um, otherwise, I'm going to now hand over to Michael to introduce his work. And um, 
please take it away, Michael. Thank you. Okay, right. Well, thank you very much for asking me to uh, present. Um, this is my first presentation as a newly qualified forest bathing or forest therapy guide. And um, I'm going to start by asking a question. So who has heard or, of, or participated in forest bathing before? And if you have, what were your experiences of it? Anybody, just popcorn in. Okay, Alexis, you, you put your hand up. You, you yeah, um, I was only recently introduced to it um, by a lady who is going to be joining us um, hopefully this evening and also on the next session that's going to have a focus on water. She's a marketing, marketing kind of guru lady. And um, I just became very, very still um, amongst the trees. And it was almost like the trees spoke to me and just, I felt this kind of like healing love going between us. That was just my experience. And it only lasted for a few seconds, but it was incredible. Lovely. Well, there is, there is I can recommend a book called The Hidden Life of Trees, uh, if you want to know more about how oh, special they are. So yeah, yeah. okay. All right, well, <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk for about 10 minutes about it, and then I'm going to do a sort of a 10 minute slot, a sort of a, a taster session, um, and then an invitation after that, but uh, I'll talk about it in a, bit late, a little bit later. Sorry, Ben, my dog is, is saying hi, so, okay. Right, so forest bathing, it uh, originated in Japan, and it's called Shinrin Yoku, which stands for forest bar. Um, and what happened, what in the, happened in the, it started in the eighties when Japan was going through this tech boom and the population was extremely stressed. There was a, a lot of autoimmune disease in the, within the population. And because Japan is very much, uh, um, uh, there's a lot of forests in Japan, they wanted to um, bring people back into nature. And they asked this question, well, what would happen if we bring back people into nature? And it started a lot of research about the implications of that and, and, and the benefits of that. And they found that uh, spending time in a forest or by, a, by the sea or whatever, there was a significant reduction in stress hormones. Um, and they found that trees produce compound called a phytoncide or a, a volatile organic compound and that is that protects them from disease and they found that when you're walking in in forests that you actually inhale these phytoncides and it has an anti-inflammatory effect on the airways it acts as an antioxidant and has both physiological and psychological effects which when which when combined with sort of the integrated stimulation of, of, uh, of the five senses induced by the characteristics of a natural environment, like where I am at the moment, um, it actually works very well. Um, ocean, the ocean air has health benefits too. The negative ions in sea air accelerate your ability to absorb oxygen and balance your serotonin levels, a body chemical linked with mood and stress. Now, um, then when it was brought over, it was brought over to the US by Amos Clifford, who was a psychologist and a counselor. And he trained as a forest bather in, in Japan. But he wanted to take it a stage further and to look at, well, what is our relationship with nature? And is it going to improve that? And he asked the question, well, how can we be in the right relationship with the more than human world? And he founded the Association of Nature and Forest Therapy. And what is forest therapy? Well, it's, it's a gentle meditative practice of moving slowly through the forest or the natural environment like the seashore with special attention to sensory experience. And this produces benefits for mental, emotional, physical and ritualistic health. It's, it's very much a, dynamic, a dynamically developing practice based on the general principle that it is 
beneficial to spend time bathing in the atmosphere of our forests, seashores and natural environments. And, and there's a long tradition in um, a lot of cultures throughout the world. It's not just about healing people. It also includes healing for the natural environment you're in. Now, the ANFT approach to forest therapy it weaves together three main strands. Shinrin Yoku, which I've explained, ecotherapy, which is based upon Carl Jung's psychology, depth, of, depth psychology, and also this response to the degradation of human health, of ecology, of cultural values. So the aim was very much from the beginning to ignite and reignite our the love for, for the more than human world um, so that people will experience nature as alive, sentient and sacred. The specific intention is to connect with nature in a healing way and this requires mindfully moving through the landscape in ways that cultivate presence, opening all the senses and actively communicating with the land. We do this through a series of invitations. Now, there are no instructions or directions. Our role is that of a guide. Okay, now an archetype, a guide archetype, which is different from an expert or leader or coach. Guides, I would say they, they understand and embody the idea that they are not leaders that create change. They are facilitators who tend spaces where others can create their own change. And the motto of forest therapy is the forest is the therapy and the guide opens the door. So typically a forest therapy session would last for up to three hours and there'll be five stages to it. The first stage is very much about rapport building and hospitality and giving information about what what you're, what you're actually going to do. Second stage is a very simple, um, gentle sensory meditation designed to connect all your senses to the natural environment. Then there follows a, a slow sensory walk in silence, just simply noticing what's around you in nature, wherever you are, um, followed by a series of partnership invitations to connect on a deeper level with the natural environment. And then it finishes with a tea ceremony, which is, is an act of incorporation, incorporating what, what you've experienced into the tea and to provide some reciprocity for the land. And this incorporation is both literal and metaphorical because in drinking tea made from plants foraged in the forest, which is what we would do, we're literally taking the forest into our bodies. And through the process of ceremony, we're also harvesting the wisdom or medicine we have received during the walk and putting it into the tea as well. After each stage, we have what's called gather, share and listen, where we share our experience in any way we want to. Uh, that could mean silence. There's no expectations, no agenda, whatever you want to say or do. And because it's pandemic, we've, we've created um, a virtual nature and forest therapy experience, which typically lasts for um, usually an hour to an hour and a half. So what I want to do is I'd like to try and stop talking uh, and get you doing something. Um, and I want to condense that into a, a 10 minute mini experience for you. But I also want to invite you all to join me for a full nature and forest therapy session, the time that suits all of us, um, because I'd really like you, you all to experience it. So what we'll do maybe at the end, we'll, I'll uh, um, talk to Alexis and we can sort of arrange a time that's, that's best and we can, we can do it be, be about an hour. So and again, it would be from my garden. And this is my garden. I might just tell you a little bit about this, this area. Um, this part of my garden, I've just left to nature. So I haven't done anything to it for a year. Um, the grass is sort of starting to grow again. Um, there's clumps of grass everywhere. There's birds, um, there's hedgehogs. 
I've seen a, a badger somewhere. There's a fox somewhere as well. So, uh, and I run my virtual um, therapy sessions from here. So, what I'd like you to do now is just to sit back and get comfortable where you are, wherever you are. Um, how, and I'll ask you a question. Have you been able to, do you have a natural item to hand? I think Alexis sent out a, a little message about that. It could be a plant or a rock or a stone or a crystal or anything that's natural to hand, because you'll need that in a little bit, little, little while. So start just by wherever you are looking, just looking around you and noticing where you are. Just noticing. And in a moment, I'll ask you to close your eyes or maintain a soft gaze towards the ground. So when you're ready, just gently close your eyes or have a soft gaze, whichever is most comfortable for you. And I invite you just to, to focus on your breathing. Breathing in. And as you breathe out, release any tension that might be in your body. Take breath into the ground. Just gently, effortlessly breathe, breathing out any tension that you might have in your body. You may have a place on your body where you experience your breath. It could be your tummy, your chest, your nostrils. So you, you can focus on that area as you breathe. Now I'd like you to, using your imaginal sense, let it call you to a place in nature. Perhaps it's a forest or a seashore or a mountain or somewhere that you know, somewhere that's special to you. And I wonder how your body feels being in that very special place. Perhaps you feel the warmth of the sun, the wind in your hair, the sound of the trees or the sea. Perhaps you can see the beauty of the colors around you. Or you can smell the fragrance in the air. It could even be the taste on your tongue. And now I invite you to put your hand on your heart. And using your heart sense, just turn in the direction that maybe it's telling you to do, to that special place. I wonder what it's telling you. I wonder what your heart is sending out. It's 
So I invite you to just be with that place and enjoy the sensory moment and the pleasure of being there. And in a moment, I invite you to gently say goodbye to that place. And in a moment, you'll be opening your eyes and perhaps seeing where you are for the very first time, imagining seeing it for the very first time. So, so now you can open your eyes and just look around you and gently come back to where you are now. Okay, so just very quickly, um, before we move into the, the final part of this little mini experience, I'll just ask for any, maybe one or two words that might describe the prompt would be, what you're noticing, what are you noticing? So we'll just popcorn in just for a minute anybody would like to offer a couple of words to share. Peaceful. Thank you. Grounded and calm. Thank you, Britta. I notice a lot of strength. Thank you. Are relaxed, peaceful. Thank you. I feel aware of my, um, I guess my hara, you know, the area below the navel. I feel awareness. Thank you. Okay. So um, normally that would be at least 20 to 25 minutes going through every single sense, um, including the heart sense, the imaginal sense, um, as well as all the physical sense senses. So this final taster, I'm going to invite you to pick up your natural object and take it with you for a very slow walk around where you are. So it'll involve getting up and just walking just for a minute or so, noticing how it feels in your hand and just noticing where you are. If you can go outside, that would be ideal. I'll call you back in a couple of minutes with an owl sound. Ooh. Ooh.
Okay, welcome back. So again, very, very simple prompt for our very quick sharing and listening is, what are you noticing? What were you noticing? Again, just popcorn out. When I went outside, I um, I had my crystal, which uh, I often wear, and uh, I was just touching it as I went to a lemon tree that was um, transplanted from my grandfather's um, house when he was alive. And I just felt really connected to the earth as I was touching the crystal and just remembering the lemon tree and just looking looking at the lemon tree, just connected. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you. I took my, um, my rock um, and I took it to my balcony and I had so much gratitude because I noticed my tulips had bloomed. And I was very, very grateful that even if, even though I live in London, I still have a space a like space to be in touch with nature. And um, that was really lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um, I could feel like the vibrations of the, I've got this stone that I found the other day in a forest that I went to. Um, it was underneath a tree that had fallen. Um, and I could just feel the vibrations of it in my hand. And when I was walking around, I think the same as Alexis, like I felt really connected and it was, I felt really emotional. I don't know what it is, but it felt, it felt nice anyway. I, so thank you. I could just really feel the vibrations in it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I took these rocks that I picked up last uh, weekend on the beach and I went to the little patio I have outside here but the only thing you could really see is the sky so I just was looking up at the sky and connecting with the sky but also connecting with the earth with these rocks and feeling the wind and the breeze just noticing the, the way the wind felt and, and hearing like the outside noise too like from traffic and just sort of feeling kind of this oneness with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wants to share something before I share something? Okay. Right, what was I noticing? Um, well, I noticed the, the buds in the the tree just at the side here that uh, are coming out, little tiny little flowers. And I noticed how precious they were. Now spring is starting to, to develop here in this part of Ireland. And I just want to just finish by showing you what we would typically do. I don't think we've got time, but I'd love to have some tea with you. <laughs> And I've got some dandelion leaves here ready to, to make tea. So maybe at the end we could have some dandelion tea. Okay. Thank you very much. That was really beautiful. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. And I know it's, it's very different for everyone, everybody's unique experience, but I think we all shared in the the sort of awe of the, the majesty of how powerful nature is as a healer. It's mm. something that we forget, you know. Um, yeah, it was very difficult to do it over sort of a, just a, a short 10 minute. It, it, needs, it needs longer. And, sure. uh, and equally, it's not quite the same when it's virtual. Yeah. But uh, it, you can still experience it. 
virtually surprisingly. Definitely, definitely. I, I did, and I'm sure many others did. Um, I'm going to suggest the 29th, which is the end of this month. Um, so not the next sacred segment, but the one after that, that we meet for your hour, um, that we take after the first half an hour, that that hour be dedicated to your ceremony. Okay. As a suggestion, and we can we can um, speak more about that and see if it works. Yes. Yes. And, um, yeah, I look forward to that. Um, so thank you, thank you so much for. You're very welcome. And uh, if anybody would like to share their experience that they weren't able to, and would like to share, then please do. Um, and, and then I just want to hear from Deborah, who joined us during that. Um, but um, I'll, I'll come to you, Deborah, in, in a moment. Good to have you with us. Um, would anybody like to share their experience that hasn't shared so far? Sure, I'll share a little bit because I kind of came in late. So I took a seed potato with me. I don't know if you can all see that, but, um, and I've been researching foods that are anti-carcinogenic. Um, and one of the foods that is, is purple potatoes. It's one of the high ones on the list. Um, turmeric, purple potatoes, and a, and a few other ones. And I just went out, I have a little garden outside my house and it's my little sanctuary. And I just kind of felt the, the yearning for the dirt. I haven't had a chance to really get out there and dig yet. It's the weather has not been totally cooperative yet. And, but it's only like a week or two away and I can sense it and feel it. And the potato is just like, Oh, get me in the ground, you know, and just noticing that I, I don't know if you can see this on there, but the spuds have little fuzz on it as this little fur. And I just was sort of enamored by this little fur coming off the spuds. And, you know, this little object is also sort of growing a beard um, and ready to sprout. And it's my duty to take care of it and get it out there into the ground. So, yeah, I love it. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, anybody else before um, I speak with Deborah? Well, great. Thank you, Michael. That was magical. And I look forward to, to more. And uh, very excited to uh, learn all there is to learn about forest bathing, which I know is probably going to be a whole lifetime. And on that subject, I'm going to just um, say hello to Deborah Mendez, who joined us during that. Deborah is going to be a guest on the next Sacred Segments. Also, um, for further adventures in forest bathing. Um, do you want to just give us a little um, introduction to yourself, just a couple of minutes and uh, speak a little bit? Sure, yeah, hi. Hi, Michael, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, just popped in and um, thank you for that as well. I was doing it uh, myself. Um, yeah, so I'm also a trained forest bathing guide and I'm local um, to Alexa, so we've, we've met as well and we were we were looking at birds and everything together um, and just before um, lockdown um, when I was doing my my guide training I thought well actually I want to take this online because I want to reach more people so um, January 2020 I actually um, did a virtual forest bath in the company a bit like this um, and it went down so well it was just like oh my god you know this really works. It's the same thing that happens in the forest that you can actually do it virtually. Um, so I have been doing these kind of events for um, within companies and, and, and this on a regular basis kind of thing. And um, yeah. Um, and I've also, yeah, put things online so people can do their own journeys. Um, next week, we're going to um, explore water 
So um, that's my next journey um, that I'm going to take people on. So yeah, it's going to be like a taster and we're going to really focus in on um, our relationship with water. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm just, I've always been in awe of water, but now I'm creating this journey. I'm just, again, my eyes are boggling. <laughs> this is the journey, you know, you just get um, it, an explorer's mind, um, a curious mind all the time, and then you just want to share it, you know, I'm sure you can relate, Michael. So, um, Fabulous. Thank, th yeah. th thank you. Um, I'm going to be sharing um, what Deborah will be doing, which will be actually on the 15th in two weeks um, at the usual time of 7, 7 p.m., um, a few days before the 15th. So uh, once I have all of that information, I will put it in an email to everybody. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that, that one. Thank you. And um, I also want to just introduce uh, Florentine, who's, who's joined us, who's going to be leading our next segment um, about remote viewing, which is very exciting. Good to see you. How are you? Hello, hello. Good to see you too. It's actually astral projection. Sorry, astral projection. I get them confused, remote viewing and astral projection. I don't know why. Yeah, I suppose they're both similar. kind of out of the body. Yeah, they're, they're similar, but they are quite different as well. Remote viewing is something that you, you download information to yourself. Uh, and you perceive images, uh, sounds maybe. And astral projection is when you actually go there where those images are. Well, thank you for, for making that distinction because I, I always get seem to get them confused, but uh, thank you for putting me right. So with that, um, M Matthew is also just joining us and I'm just gonna welcome him to the group and then hand over to you for your segment if you are happy with that. For me to go ahead with that. Yeah, sure, okay, little, so it's earlier this time. A little bit earlier than planned, but... Um, uh, That's great. Great. Okay, perfect. And uh, I just want to say hello to Matthew, who's just joined us. How are you, Matthew? How are you, Matthew? I am well. How are you? Well, thank you. Thank you. I know you're joining us a little bit late. You just missed the forest bathing, but you were here for the astral projection segment. So um, uh, just a couple of ground rules. If you would um, all please... Um, stay on mute uh, we will have a an opportunity for questions and you know further feedback after this but in the meantime thank you for being here for everybody and um, i'm going to hand over again to florentine thank you all right cool so yeah my name is florentine and i'm an astral projection coach uh, which means that i help people to have astral projections, out-of-body experiences. And this, this is a quite a complicated topic, but I, I've only got, I think, 20 minutes to talk about it. So I'm gonna try to just focus on the, the main things. Uh, so I, I don't have enough time to go talk about my background, all that stuff. But at this moment, I have created a 12 weeks, uh, very successful and serious program that helps people to do this. And so my daily work is to help people to succeed with this practice. Now, what is astral projection? What, what is the difference between astral projection and lucid dreaming and remote viewing? Because there's all the different uh, segments that are kind of similar, but there are differences, quite big differences. So uh, for example, everyone is familiar with dreaming. Everyone had a dream, I'm sure, <laughs> you know? And some of you maybe even had a lucid dream. A lucid dream is where you are aware in the dream that it's a dream and then you can also control that dream if you want to. Now, usually a, a lucid dream is something that happens uh, in an environment that is your own simulated little universe or simulated little reality. And in that environment, you have control over, over the environment. If you want to change the, um, the colors of the walls or the landscape, you can do that. Uh, if you, um, uh, usually the, the environments are quite, um, uh, 
they're not that stable. They can sort of shift and, and morph into different things. So you might look away to this side and you see a door and then you look to the left and then you look back and the door is gone now. It's like a field. And so it's not very stable. And it's all like you're, it's you're, you're creating it and you're experiencing it at the same time. And, and this is a very powerful state, lucid dreaming. It's not, some, not, some, not something that you want to downplay because it's something that you can use uh, for healing. You can go within yourself and work on different uh, childhood traumas or different limiting beliefs they might have. There's, there's a lot of lucid dreaming healing that you can do um, in those inner worlds. Now with astral projection, it's when you are going beyond the dimension of your own little world where you go into the universe and you can explore other realities, other consciousness fields. And when you do that, there is really no limitation or boundaries where you can go. There are so many places you can visit and there's so many things that you can do. Um, now, for the, for the sake of giving an example of what other dimensions might um, might be and why why there is other dimensions and how this whole practice works. I'm going to try to explain a little bit. So uh, most most of the times, the most common way of practicing astral projection is to go into a very deep meditative state uh, where you get yourself, you get your body to get into this very deep state where your body literally falls asleep. You no longer have the awareness of the physical body. The physical body just becomes this kind of very heavy blanket kind of feeling. And if you get even deeper than that, then you will start experiencing this non-physical sensations as we like to call them, which are things like vibrations, a feeling of vibrate, vibration moving through your body, or it can be um, uh, that you see uh, maybe different visions, different fractals or images, or it can be that you hear voices or buzzing sounds in your ears. All of these are signs of a non-physical uh, origin. And if that happens, it means that you no longer are now in your physical body. You're now shifted to your energy body, which is the vehicle that we use when we travel in the astral. And so it, at this point in the meditation, if you now try to sit up or roll out or you know any movement that takes you away from the bed where you're practicing in, uh, you will actually start separating from the physical body and you will move out of body, you move out of the bed and leave the physical body behind. And now you're projected basically in your bedroom or you can be projected in other places. Uh, really what, what happens here is that you're shifting frequency. So your consciousness right now is, is focused on the frequency of the physical world. And when you get into this meditation, and when you start getting into that deep state and you shift your frequency and you start to explore the non-physical worlds, you shift in non-physical dimensions. And so um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the fact that our eyes, you know, if you look at the visible spectrum of light, there it's, it's a, you know, if, if this is the spectrum, uh, our eyes can only, only see kind of maybe like 5% or 3% of that. The rest is invisible to our eyes, but it's still there. So we know that reality is beyond what we can perceive with our senses. You know, our eyes are limited in a specific frequency range. Our hearing is limited in a specific frequency range and everything else as well. And we know, for example, that dogs can hear sounds that we cannot hear and so on and so forth. And so when we are asked projecting, we are accessing different frequencies, you can say. And so by shifting frequency, it's very much like when you have a radio and you can shift from one radio channel to another radio channel just by switching the frequency. The, the frequencies are in the air all around us. The sound of the, the radio channels are all around us. Uh, and just by switching the dial, you can sort of tune in on a specific frequency and then you hear a different track, a different uh, music playing. And it's the same with our consciousness. We can shift our frequency into different dimensions, different realities and then we can explore that reality and learn and grow. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Like what can we do when we get into these other realities? Um, so is everything clear so far, by the way? All good. OK, cool. Right. So when we now travel beyond our physical body and we are in different realms, um, 
there are multiple things that we can do. And usually the most popular things that uh, most people come to this practice for is number one, to gather information. So to, to learn more about the universe or about yourself, uh, to connect with spirit guides, ask them different questions about why you're here or uh, where you were before and where you're gonna go after, like get clarity on these kind of questions, existential questions. Uh, maybe access the Akashic records and find out some information that you wanted to, to learn about. Uh, so there's a lot of that about, about like getting information and getting answers to questions that you cannot find in the physical, that you cannot find in a book maybe. And then there's also, of course, the uh, uh, reconnecting with lo a loved one that has passed away. So the deceased loved ones that have passed away that still are with us, but not in this physical dimension. And this is something that is truly a very healing experience. I've, I've been, uh, I haven't experienced it myself. Luckily, I haven't had anyone that's passed away that I've connected with yet, but I've, I've had clients that have done this uh, multiple times. And the, you know, the experience of being able to reconnect with someone that has passed away and then seeing them again and talking to them and exchanging information and finding out things that you might have not known before they died and then getting that confirmation that, wow, this, this was not just a dream. It was like a real experience. I, I, the things he said or she said made sense. I verified it. And th that, is, that is a very healing, a powerful experience right there to be able to, to not only like, you, you know that the person is okay. You know, that's the first thing, you know that they're not just gone. They haven't just disappeared. They're actually still with us somewhere else, right? And then you also get that understanding that, oh, and I also will continue when I die, like, like he did or she did. And that is very powerful because then you have that understanding that life goes on. Like when you die here, life continues in the astral. And, and um, that's one of the most healing aspects of this practice that I found. And, um, and that's one of the things that people like to do with this practice. Now, the other things is, of course, other types of healing. And so you can use this practice to heal emotional or physical or spiritual things. Um, we talked a little bit about that before, about how you can heal traumas. So you can, you can ask to project, you can go back in time, you can revisit maybe a childhood memory that was very traumatic to you. And you can learn how to, how to um, heal from that. Um, uh, I have, um, you know, I have some some clients that have been through uh, very difficult times, like uh, uh, what's it called, uh, abusement, child abusement, and that's very tough stuff. And one of those, one of the things, that was one of the first things that they had to face when they started to travel, because there was when you were when you're carrying on very heavy loads, uh, you cannot go very far. You need to first deal with all of the trauma before you can go further. And of course, that's a very important step to do in life as well, to just heal from whatever emotional uh, pain that you might have from, from the past. And then other things that you can do as well. Um, I have uh, one client that had a skin problem that uh, he tried healing with different uh, medicines, different creams, different uh, conventional ways, different experts, and none of it worked. And at the same time, he was learning how to ask to project. And he thought, he thought, you know, people say you're supposed to be able to heal things out of body. So how about I try it? So he was telling, about, telling me about his experience when he was going out of body. And in the out of body state, you can create things with your intent. So, you know, he reached behind his back and just intended that behind his back, there's going to be a jar of a healing cream. So he reached back and then suddenly he fills this jar, takes it up and takes out the the cream and puts it on his skin, right? And that was a very refreshing experience, you know, then he came back to his body, looked at his physical skin, there was no difference, everything looked the same. But then after two weeks, it slowly faded away and it was just gone and he didn't have that skin problem ever since. And that's really, really impressive. And we don't really know the extent of how much you can do with this, like how many things you can heal can you heal cancer? We don't know. There hasn't been enough research being done in, in this area, but it's very, very interesting and very interesting how these things work. Uh, I have another client that quit smoking. Uh, this was very interesting. He 
had an experience where he was shown, he was taken inside of his uh, body, shown inside of the, the veins, what the smoke, what the particles of the ashes was doing to his, uh, to his veins. And I was creating these like walls of plaque of this black stuff. And he got so scared of what he saw in that experience that he quit smoking afterwards. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, <clears throat> now, what else? So we talked about these different healing modalities. Uh, there's also, you can, of course, there's also the, 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 the classical healing of being able to go out of body and visit someone that is ill and then using your, using your hands, using your intention, you can heal that person. And in that state, you also have, you don't have the, the sort of um, um, the dense filters of the physical body in a way. Like when, you, when you're healing physically, it's, it's a bit kind of like you have this physical thing that's in the, in the way, but when you're out of body, your pure energy, you can just, you can put your hands through the person's body and heal them in that way. Uh, and I have a one, one of the ladies in my group is a Reiki healer, and now she's able to do Reiki in an out of body state, which is really interesting as well. She's able to actually go to the patient and like put her hands on the patients, wherever they are in the world and see them and, and, and heal them and see also the different, uh, maybe energy blockages that they might have in their bodies because you're now seeing with a different uh, perception, not seeing with your physical eyes, you're seeing with your, uh, with your consciousness. And, and, and this, this vision that you have out of body, it's not like the vision we have here. You can see, um, you can have visions where you can see through walls, uh, where you can, um, you, can, you can look really, really far and have still very crystal clear vision because you're not using physical eyes, you're using a completely different instrument to, to see. You can also have a 360 degree vision which some people report seeing in all directions all at once which is also like really interesting and it's the same with the hearing you can hear things that are really far away from you I just noticed the microphone was a bit far hopefully it's gonna be better now uh, so you can actually you can hear sounds that are like super far away from you uh, sometimes when I get into this uh, meditative state and I get, start to get to the separation phase, I can hear the sounds of the environment that I am in uh, very, very clearly. So if, for example, if I am in a city, I can hear people having conversations, like as if they're like, like sitting in my room, multiple people talking, like a lot of people are in my room. And, and in the beginning when that happened, I was really like shocked. I was like, who, wait, who came into my room? And I took off my headphones like, hey, What's, what's going on? <laughs> and I realized, okay, there was no one in the room. It's all non-physical. And you have to learn to like, just go with it. Uh, if I were to practice in, a, in nature, I would be able to start hearing the, the birds and the, the wind and the trees like really far away from I'm practicing. And it's, it's a very interesting set of consciousness that goes beyond the physical uh, limitations that we have. And now, of course, the uh, one of the main goals for most people that join this practice uh, is spiritual growth. It's, it's, it's about how to evolve as a soul. That's what most people are interested in and myself included. And that is, you know, that is a, that's a very large area. And we usually work with guides in that field. You know, we, we, we go out of body, we intend to meet with guides and guides, spirit guides, which have known us for lifetimes and can guide us and can give us clarity on, why we are here in this lifetime and you know where we should be working on and how we can work on different aspects of ourselves and and these kind of things um i can share a personal story when i met my guide the the first time and i asked a, this question which i was dying to ask which was what is my purpose why why am i here um uh, why, why did, no, my, my question was, why did I choose to incarnate in this lifetime? Like, what is my mission or so in this lifetime? And I was expecting that she, it was a she, it's a, it's a she, uh, a girl that looks like a Pocahontas kind of person with feathers and stuff. Very interesting. And she said, to my surprise, I was thinking that she's going to say something about, well, your purpose is to create this life-changing world changing thing that's going to help people or whatever something that's going to change the world something like that my Aquarius side I guess wanted to he hear something like that uh, but 
instead she said you chose to incarnate because you wanted to you wanted to experience love and relationships and that was really powerful and stood with me you know stuck with me for for years afterwards and i pondered over that a lot like okay what does that really mean um and and it really resonates with me because if i if i look at life and my life and life in general i think love obviously and relationship is probably the most important thing that we have and i i was i've been i was thinking about this ex, ex sort of mind game little experiment in my mind i was just imagining and i can i would like you guys to imagine this yourself right now imagine that you are you wake up one day in the morning and you look out your window and let's say you live in the middle of london or new york right and there's usually cars and people and everything but you look out the window and it's just dead there's no one there you look at your phone there's no new messages there's no updates on facebook or anything uh, and you somehow find out that somehow everyone is gone all the people you knew and didn't know all the animals everyone everything is gone it's just you the planet and of course everything else like you still have somehow in a magical way you have access to uh, unlimited food serving in the restaurant you have all the money in the world all the cryptocurrency <laughs> you have all the cars you have all the houses you can travel anywhere you want somehow the, the plane works it takes you where you want to go so you have everything but you have nobody to share it with and somehow you also know that it's going to be like that for the rest of your life there's no hope that anyone's going to come back and so the question is you know how would you feel living your life completely alone and have nobody to share it with It's for me, it's very sad. It's, it feels like life is pointless without people, without relationships, without love. There's no point to living a physical human life. It just kind of everything just falls apart. And so, yeah, that uh, message really resonated with me from her. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's what I wanted to share with you guys at this point. I think uh, my 20 minutes is, is up. And so I guess now we can take questions. I have a question. Um, what, sure. would be, what would be the first thing that you would suggest to somebody that uh, wants to learn how to do astral projection? Uh, well, the, the first thing that I would suggest is to go to this link below <laughs> here, check out my website and um, watch my video. That's probably the best thing to do. Now, if you want to get some, some tips on where you can start on your own, um, I would recommend to start meditating, start getting good at getting your, your mind to be more silent so you don't have lots of thoughts going through your mind, uh, becoming more aware of your reality uh, by doing reality checks. So we are right now in a physical reality and we take it for granted. And when we dream, for example, we also take anything that happens there for granted. And so, uh, so there's there's different techniques that we can get into these and uh, into the astral projection state. Uh, I teach three different methods, which are the the main methods. So you have one method, which is how to transition into an astral projection through sleep. So you can you can fall asleep, and then while you're dreaming, you can become lucid. You can become aware that wait a second, this is a dream. And we do that through uh, becoming really good with our reality by doing reality checks. So, for example, you know, if you uh, if you were to look at uh, if every time you see something strange in your physical life, like you see maybe uh, you walk on the street and you see a, a, a tree that's really pink, that just looks strange to you, then you do a reality check. You look at your hands, you count your fingers, and you just analyze your hands. And then maybe you walk a couple more meters, you see a, a clown or something, or maybe just a red car or something. 
You do another reality check, look at your hands. Then what happens if you keep going with this, then after a while, you will start dreaming that you're looking at your hands when you see something strange. And in the dream state, your hands always look a bit strange. Either you have six fingers or they're like three or they're transparent or they're moving. Something weird is usually about the, the, the fingers. And then you know, oh, I am actually dreaming. All right, cool. And then you become aware in the dream, which becomes a lucid dream. And from there, uh, you can then transition into an astral projection if you choose to, or you can just explore uh, the lucid dream state as well, which is, like I said before, a very powerful state. Um, and that is the first method is like how to become lucid in your dream, how to use your sleep and your dreams to be able to have these experiences. But I found that that, that method isn't the most effective method because it really relies a lot on you on, on the hope that you're going to become lucid in the dream and if you don't if you just sleep through it and you don't realize then you kind of lost that opportunity so what we've done instead is that we've developed different uh techniques and different using technology to help you get into that state easier and so that the, the second method that i teach is called the semi-indirect method which is basically a method that we do upon awakening from sleep so uh, we go to sleep with these specific soundtracks that I've designed. And then um, at some point, my voice comes on and wakes you up very softly and tells you to do some specific techniques. And if, when you do those techniques, you'll be able to detect if you're experiencing any non-physical sensations. And if you do, then you can immediately just sit up and roll out out of, out of body, basically. Uh, so that's that's a practice we do upon awakening from sleep because coming from sleep, there's that little window of when you coming from being uh, asleep in this dream state, you're coming to the physical. And if you just capitalize, uh, um, capitalize on that little transition, you can actually get out of body. And then the third method is of course, the, um, the direct method, which is through deep meditation. As I was talking about before, where you get yourself into a very deep state that you then start experiencing these vibrations or other sensations, and then you can separate. And so um, those are the three methods. And what I found is that everyone is different. And so one method that works for some people doesn't necessarily work for the other person. So it's important to experiment to find out which ones are the right ones for you. And that is exactly what I do. And when I work with people, I tend through all the different methods and we find out which, which ones are the ones that's gonna work for, for them. And we fine tune it so that they have their own, what I like to call projection blueprint, which is the blueprint of what makes projection possible for them because everyone is different. And so if you wanted to do this on your own, you'll have to experiment with these different methods and find out which ones that are gonna resonate more with you. If you're a deep sleeper, if you're a light sleeper, Again, it can be a different, uh, uh, a different method for you. Great, thank you so much, Florentine. Um, that was absolutely fascinating. I, I just wanna open it up to questions from anyone that would like to ask any. Yeah, I have a question. Oh, please. Go ahead, Himanshi. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, um, when we do astral projection, is the time of the day or the how much we had our sleep is important? Like a uh, like few months ago, I was trying to do it, and somebody recommended me to do it in the morning. Like if I get up at 6 o'clock, so I should be doing it somewhere uh, around 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. So that at that state, I am not completely asleep or woke. So this is like the best time to do astral projection. Okay, I get your question. Uh, yes, so when we go to sleep at night, we usually fall into a deep sleep, very, very deep sleep. So usually practicing at night is not that effective. It's much more effective to sleep a couple of hours, usually like five hours, four, five, six hours, and then wake up and do the practice. And that's usually before we wake up for, for work or for school. So we interrupt our sleep. We wake up in the early hours, like 5 a.m., for example. And we're at that point, we're still in this kind of like sleepy state. We're, we're very calm. Our body's very relaxed. Our mind is very relaxed. We're not thinking a bunch of thoughts. We're not thinking about work, about worry about this, about worry about that. We're very calm. 
everyone else is sleeping, it's very silent, it's the perfect time to actually just lay down and do your little practice and have your moment for yourself. So yeah, I highly recommend the mornings. Thank you. Hi, Florentine. Hello. Taking a quick walk in the outdoors, being the outdoors person right. I am. Um, oh, gosh, what should I say? Um, so I, I get ringing in the ears sometimes, and after my yoga, I sort of, you know, feel this vibration, and um, I, you know, I get the thing about the quantum field and everything. And if I think about everything is one and consciousness, I can get the concept in that you can go into your Akashic records and what have you. Um, now, I guess the question is, as a forest bathing guide as well, this thing about oneness, is it just like our, ourselves finding ourselves? Because oh, I'm worrying about what I'm going to discover. I'm scared. <laughs> Someone told me, oh, you can reach out to your nature guides, which I do, in a, you know, well, my subconscious and, and nature can help with that. But um, yeah, you know, what would you say to someone who's like, you know, a bit scared of what they're going to find out? Well, the fear part is always a, uh, um, a, a blockage that can, that keeps people from even attempting to go out of body. And I'm, I'm very familiar with this because a lot of people have the fear of, okay, what's going to happen? What if, what if I go out there and I, I see something I don't like, or, mm. or uh, there is a, I get, my body gets possessed by a demon or something like that. <laughs> and I find that there is a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of fearful information that's been spread into this, this domain. And if you look at like, experienced projectors and, and authors, they don't talk about these things. They don't talk about like how scary it is out there. It's usually people that that either, either don't practice it themselves, but have spread these different rumors, uh, or they just are very fearful because of their religion that they believe in. And I think there's been a lot of religious influence that's been like uh, gathered into this just to keep people away from experiencing God or experiencing the universe themselves, to have to go to church, to have to go to the priest to actually find uh, answers to these questions. And that's a way of controlling people. And this practice is very ancient. So it's been around for thousands of years. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of dogma and stuff that's been put into it. So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a bit of a, a bit of a jungle, but yeah, what I, I can say is that when you, when you, uh, when you project, when you're out of body, you are, you are so free. You can, you can fly, you can mm. teleport, you can go through walls. If you're on the street and there's a car that comes and drives onto you, it will go through you. You know, you're indestructible in that way. Mm. And if you were to get, you know, scared about something that you don't like seeing, you can just return to the body by just thinking about the body, you return in an instant. This is not something we can do in the physical, you know, we're in the physical, if you're, if someone's running after you, trying to mug you, you, you're, you're, <laughs> you have to run or hide or something, you know, uh, in the physical, we're much more fragile than we are in the non-physical. So that's a good way of thinking about it, that actually being in the physical is more, can be more scary than being in the non-physical because of these, uh, not these limitations that we don't have when we are traveling out of body. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you use the word um, experience the universe and God. Well, that, that's, that answers the question as well. Very valid question. Yeah. Thank you. Th thank you. I think that there's probably time for one more question before we hand over to uh, Greta. I would like to ask a, uh, a question to everybody. So I just want to see, is there anybody else that would like to ask Florentine one final question? Yes, I, I've got a, a question. Oh. Go ahead. Um, it's it's just what's it's, it's about linking it to hypnotherapy. How, how is it? Uh, are there any connections between the sort of the, the conscious and the subconscious, where you're, you're working with the subconscious as a hypnotherapist um, and astral projection? So, and and what, and the second part of that that question would be: Could you use? The same sort of language, the ambiguous hypnotic sort of Milton model type 
language to sort of um, reach your 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 place. So could you use hypno hypnotherapy to have astral projections? Is that maybe the question? Well, is is, is you know is there a link between um, you know hypnotherapy is is best about talking to your subconscious, and is your yeah. subconscious is that the the door into astral projection? Could that be a yes, way I in? Think, I think I think that's a good way of putting it. Yes, you definitely have to become best friends with your subconscious mind when you're practicing. Uh, you uh, and and that's why it can be a healing experience, a healing practice, because you get in touch with that deeper aspect of you. That I guess when you're when you're doing hypnosis, you can find things from the subconscious too. You can find out what the subconscious actually thinks about a specific person or a specific fear. You can find the root cause in in hypnosis, and with um, with astral projection and lucid dreaming as well, uh, you can you can do that. You can have, but you can have a full HD experience that would you know that would show you. Uh, the the trauma or the solution to the problem that you're that you're looking for in, in a very experiential way where you actually are you know you're being taken to see different things and uh, for example if you i'll just give an example for example in the you might have an experience uh, a dream for example where you have a, a monster that's chasing you and you're like terrified you're running away from that monster and if you can become lucid in that dream and you know, look at your hands and like ask if you're dreaming or not, and you realize you're dreaming, then you can control the dream. And the best thing to do with monsters is to actually turn around to them and face them and give them love, hug them. And if you hug a monster, usually they turn into small puppies or a teddy bear or something cute like that. And um, that monster, you can also ask the monster, what are you supposed to symbolize? And that, that's obviously in your subconscious mind, this monster has a, there's a symbol to it. And the monster might say, I am your boss. You have to work harder, <laughs> you know? And then you understand, okay, that's the, that's, I, I see my boss as a monster in my dreams because I'm so afraid of him. And as you, as you hug the monster, uh, and the, the puppy, the, 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 the boss, turns into a, a puppy and you suddenly feel that emotional release that you've just uh, healed something with the relationship to your, to your boss. I actually had this experience myself uh, when I was working in the uh, visual effects industry and I had a very, very challenging boss that I was constantly in fighting with every day. And I, I had this experience with him and I realized afterwards that um, the solution for to solve our relationship was not to keep fighting against him, was actually to, to be more compassionate to him and, and love him, even though he was like very aggressive to me. I had to like do a complete different turn onto him and, and that worked much better. And that came in an experience like that. And so it's, it's definitely very connected to the subconscious mind. Very powerful. Thank you, Florentine. Um, I imagine there are so many different applications to, to this that is relevant to everybody's healing and personal development and um, psychic and spiritual development. And I'm sure that there are questions that haven't been answered um, or asked. Um, and perhaps you would like to contact Florentine direct on via his website, elasticperception.com. Thank you so much for sharing all of that information Florentine, fascinating stuff and um, really grateful to have you here. And um, I would also like to give the opportunity to um, our previous guest, uh, Michael, who um, didn't share any contact information. Do you have a website? Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't at the moment. Um, oh, okay, perhaps. Um, but I will do. Great. But, okay. Uh, Go my, ahead. My, I'm on LinkedIn, and uh, so you can get my LinkedIn um, profile. And also, I'm happy for you to give out my my e email address. Great. And and you you will be returning to us um, as a guest at the end of the month as well, which we will talk about more 
um, yeah. very soon. And uh, thank you guys for your input tonight. Beautiful stuff and uh, really powerful. Before I hand over to Greta, uh, I just want to um, check in with you very quickly, Greta. We're going to finish at nine and that's, uh, that's good for you. Yeah, I just need to actually go at that time. So I need to be finished. Absolutely, yeah, we will. I'm going to put a question to the whole group and I uh, just want maybe one or two people to answer it, whoever feels the need is the greatest. So the question is, <clears throat> is there a message that you replay from your childhood that um, comes to mind even today? Um, so I'm just going to open that to everybody. Does it, anybody feel that they would like to share? something from their childhood that is still kind of replayed in their mind today that's holding them back. I would like to. Please go ahead, Matthew. So when I was younger, I had epilepsy and I was bullied. So having oh. struggle, having struggle. Let me fix that. You I had, I had struggled um, connecting to my peers. Can you hear me? Yes. So having struggled making connections with and making friends up till this day, I still have trouble with that. So feeling unloved, unworthiness, and keep it keeps replaying in my mind, and it keeps saying, "Oh, you're not worthy enough. You're having. To, you're not going to make connections. You're not." Nobody wants to be friends. Mm. Thank you for sharing that, Matthew. That's really profound. And um, the reason I asked the question is because uh, I, you know, I would like Greta to have, um, you know, something from, from us to work with. And that's a very, very powerful thing that I think that we all resonate with in one way or another. Um, would... Anybody else like to share something before I hand over to Greta? Can I say something? Please. It, because it's related. Um, a message I received over and over again as a child was that I wasn't worth spending money on. Mm -hmm. That like I, um, yeah, that I was like, anything I wanted was too expensive, even if it was something small like an ice cream or something. Wow. So that the message was that I wasn't worth spending like a dollar on or, and I know that that's carried over and that, you know, my needs or wants or desires were not as important as other people's. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's very powerful. Okay. Well, okay. I'm sorry. Go I ahead. Have yeah, go ahead. <laughs> So uh, since childhood, well, this is not my perception, a very strong perception that I have in my mind, that unless and until I am really educated, I have a lot of money, I have a lot of power in my hand, I won't be confident in the society, I won't be likable in the society, I won't be like, I won't have friends. I mean, in certain parts, it's true, but for me, now things have been changing as I'm seeing. I need to be a good person and everybody is worthy of friends. Everybody is worthy of love. But unless and until you have all these materialistic things, you're not worthy of anything. I just want to just take this perception out of my mind and materialistic things are not worthy enough. You are worthy enough. Your soul is worthy enough. That is what I want to do. Absolutely. Yes, we're all worthy of love. Thank you, Himanshi. Um, with that, I'm going to ha now hand over to Greta. Thank you, everybody, for your participation tonight. Um, Greta, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Alexis. And thank you to the previous speakers for their amazing segments. This has been so inspiring, and I really enjoyed learning about these two very different subjects and it's just been a wonderful experience so thank you so much i really appreciate it now uh, my job is to 
put this all together to uh, help us all heal whatever we need to heal to uh, get the most out of this uh, call. So if you have anything come to mind, you can pop it in the chat and we will include it into the intention of what we want to heal today. And um, I'm going to change my view so I can see all of you. Um, I'm going to be connecting to our energy as a group. So as if, if anybody's not okay with that and you'd like to opt out, just let me know by like, a, I don't know, thumbs down or something like that. And I'll just exclude you from it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna include all, all of us. Good, so I'm taking that as a you are in. Um, good. There. Um, so what I will be doing today is emotion code. And emotion code is the energy healing modality that we use to find and release negative trapped emotional energies. And by doing that, we adjust our emotional set point and our point of attraction. So it's really wonderful and effective and spot on. Thank you. Uh, if you have a magnet handy, you can use that for releasing the emotions or you can use your powerful magnetic hand that's going to work as well. So I'm gonna get us started. Uh, good. My first question that I, I wanna ask is, what can we release today to help us all have perfect crystal clear clarity about what we want, about our goals and dreams in life? So what can we release to help us have that clarity? Okay, so the first emotion that comes up is taken for granted. So I'm giving you all just a few seconds to acknowledge whatever might come up for you, where this emotion occurred in your life. And if nothing comes up, that's fine. And now we're going to release this emotion of taken for granted. We do that by starting at the third eye, swiping three times to the back of our necks. Good. Well done, you, you guys look beautiful. Did we release this emotion? Yes, we did. Wonderful. All right, so is there anything else we can release to help have perfect clarity about our goals and wants and dreams? Yes. Frustration. So let's release this trapped emotion of frustration. Three swipes. Good, is that released? Yes, wonderful. Is there anything else that we can benefit from releasing to help us have crystal clear, a crystal clear view of our goals and dreams? Yes. Defensiveness. Good. Can we release? Yes, let's release this trapped emotion of defensiveness. Three swipes. Wonderful. Is that released? Yes. Is there anything else that we can release for this? Yes. Indecisiveness. Okay, so let's release this indecisiveness. Three swipes. Good. Is that released? Yes. Can we move on? Good. What's the priority right now? Is it this? This. Okay. So um, the next one is inspired by Florentine. It is, what can we release to help us open up to experiencing astral projection? and or other dimensions and other experiences in this uh, area that we would like to experience. So what can we release to open ourselves up to these kinds of experiences? Mm -hmm. 
stubbornness. <laughs> stubbornness comes up. So let's release the stubbornness. Three swipes. Good. Is that released? Yes. Good. Is there anything else we can release to help with this? Yes. Self-abuse, usually in the form of negative self-talk, like I can't do this or that kind of thing. Can we release it? Yeah, let's release this trapped emotion of self-abuse. Good. Was that released? Yes. Okay. What, what can we release now that is going to, if there is, is there anything blocking our healing, our growth that we can benefit from releasing? Yes. Grief. So grief comes up. So let's release this trapped emotion of grief. Three swipes. Good, is that released? Yes. I see some magnets, it, make me, it makes me smile. <laughs> You've done this before. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's Tammy and Himanshi. I found mine. <laughs> I think I would have had it handy from earlier. <laughs> Good. I was fidgeting, that was why. <laughs> Great, so let's continue. What else is, what else might be blocking us from healing that we can release now? Bitterness. All right. Good, so can we release it? Yes, let's release this trapped emotion of bitterness. Three swipes. Good, is that released? Yes. What else? Where do we go now? Here. So what can we release to help us get closer to nature and connect deeply with nature? Despair. So let's release this trapped emotion of despair. Is that released? Yes. Anything else? Yes. Shame. Okay, can we release? Yes, let's release this shame. Is it released? Yes, good. So what can we release to help us get closer to nature and connect with nature? And in nature, I'm also going to include animals. So guilt. Just acknowledge whatever thoughts come up, what it might mean to you. And let's release this trapped emotion of guilt. Is it released? Yes, good. Okay, so what can we release to ground us? How can we get completely grounded? What can we release to achieve that? Nervousness. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what I sensed. Okay, so can we release it? Yes. Let's release this trapped emotion of nervousness. Is it released? Yes, good. Now, what can we release to help us connect deeply with others? What can we release that will enable us to create deep nurturing relationships with others? Confusion. Good, can we release? Let's release this trapped emotion of confusion. Good. 
Is it released? Yes. Good. Anything else? Yes. Helplessness. Let's release this trapped emotion of helplessness. Three swipes. Good, is that released? Yes. Okay, so what can we release to increase our self sense of worthiness? Worthiness of connections, worthiness of spending money on, worthiness of receiving energy worthiness of receiving all the best that love and life have to offer what can we release to increase this sense of worthiness grief <coughs> so let's do three swipes to release this trapped emotion of grief good now is that released yes Wonderful. Anything else? Yes. Creative insecurity. This is insecurity in our ability to create whatever it should be, whether it's a relationship, job, a meal, some art, anything that you create. So let's release this creative insecurity. released yes good so what's the last feeling that we can release that will give us the absolute most benefit unsupported okay can we release yes let's release this trapped emotion of unsupported good was that released yes Good, great job, everyone. Thank you for your input. I'm gonna ask the one question. Matthew asked, what kind of magnet? It doesn't matter. Any fridge magnet, like any kind of magnet's gonna work. Even your hand has uh, magnetic energy. I use what's called a Nikon magnet. Um, it's, it's more powerful and it's cause I, I like stuff. <laughs> so I like having a, a fancy magnet to do my energy healing work, but you don't need it. If I don't have it, I just use my hand. <coughs> but like, yeah, if you want a good quality magnet, get a Nikon magnet, otherwise fridge magnet, whatever makes you happy. So yeah. And that's time. Thank you for having me, Alexis. Thank I you guys so much. Greta, and I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone. Uh, really appreciate your presence here tonight and uh, thank you everybody for being here. Um, I'm sure that there's so much more for us to share and please, um, you know, feel free to get in touch with me or Greta or Florentine or Michael. Um, and if you need any contact details, just uh, ask me. Um, otherwise, see you in a couple of weeks if you would like to join and Deborah will be talking about the power of water and its relation to forest bathing. So um, join us for that and uh, more healing and manifestation, um, focusing tips and uh, sharing. Thank you everybody for being here. Really appreciate your presence. If I could just ask you one question, Florentine, the crystal around your neck, um, is it a crystal or is it a special stone? What is that? Uh, it's a uh, it's a crystal. Yeah, it's, what it's type a quartz. It? Just just I got it in Machu Picchu. Lovely. Yeah, I wondered whether it was a special stone or yeah. So it yeah, is. It's not like a special. It's not a special astro projection stone or anything. <laughs> like that. It's just it's just a normal uh, normal uh, quartz crystal with some. It has a moon and a, and a sun attached to it as well. Beautiful. I'm a yeah. crystal fanatic, so I had to ask. Thank you, oh. everybody. And have, have a wonderful evening. Great to see you all. Likewise. Appreciate Thank you, you too. All. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank Bye. You, everyone. Bye. Bye.